Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Laster? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. Alderperson Perello? Here. Alderperson Salazar? Here. Alderperson Sfoglio? Present. There are 10 present. All right, for those in attendance, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, 1.3, approval of the minutes from our previous meeting. Alderperson Feldy. Approval. I move to approve the minutes. Second. There's been a motion second. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor of, of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Minutes are approved. Anyone for public forum today? There is no one this evening. All right. Um, 1.5, council rules, adopting amended rules regarding the location and availability of meetings. Alder Person Feldy. I move to adopt council rules. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's approved. 1.6, mayoral appointments, various. City attorney. The mayor submits the following appointments for your consideration. Uh, to the <coughs> House Rehabilitation Loan Commission, Gina Cavelli. To the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry Commissioners, Travis Gross, as the representative of the Historic Preservation Commission, and to the Library Board, Amanda Salazar, as the Alderperson representative. Then um, those will lay over. Okay, uh, next is 1.7, a presentation by the City Administrator. All right, thank you. All right, we're gonna walk through this. Oh, forgot my binder one sec. All right, for many of you, this is this will be a little bit of a, um, a review uh, as since we have several new alders, I felt that it would be very important and value added to touch on some of the items that were reviewed on the state of the city. So a quick review of the, for everybody. And, all right, so in the past I've talked about our our prior state and our basically our, our four failures as a city. Number four is obviously our roads, over 200 miles. Number three is our infrastructure, the multiple buildings. Number two is our fleet, which we took care of with our enterprise fleet management program. And number one, our most important asset are our city staff members. So when we talk about the prior state that led to the following issues, we talk about communication, the lack of adequate internal communication between and within departments. We continue to work on that. Our permissions inadequate uh, throughout our, our city with improper and mismanaged permissions. Our approvals similar to the permissions. We had limited consistency and or oversight in numerous approval processes throughout the city. Documentation, the lack of, and, you'll, and you, you'll continue to hear us talk about that. And then inefficient processes, analysis, and or being imp um, improvements in multiple activities were, have been neglected over the years. And again, this is not a situation that happened overnight. This is something that has happened over 10 plus years. Cultural issues, again, leadership failure and mismanagement led to the st uh, stagnant and apathetic uh, internal culture. This brings us to our core, core values. This is something that um, I believe significantly in because we should be looking at our core values in every action that we do throughout the city, whether it's internal or external, department to department or to our constituents. We need to focus on our service, our teamwork, our accountability, our innovation, respect, and in our stewardship or fiscal responsibility. These are our core values that are gonna help us. 
These core values will help us get through um, our focal points. It, this is basically a paradigm shift uh, to focus on our strategic plan um, throughout. So it drives our city mission uh, to steer towards the city's vision, provides support and, uh, to the strategic plan focus areas and goals. It allows us to improve and innovate services and provide, uh, provide it to the re residents, ensures tighter fiscal and process controls, allows us to create the gold, gold standard in operations, and it allows us to make the city an employer of choice. So when we talk about these, and we look at the, the support, this is our pleasant, our pleasant plan and future. When we, when we look at number four, this has been a journey for all of us in our departments as far as to ensure tighter fiscal and, and process controls. When we look at number five, this is, this is throughout the entire, entire group. We need to be the gold standard in operations as we improve. And number, number six, the last one, make the, the city of Sheboygan the employer of choice. This is the goal that, that we have with the culture of the city. We should be the employer of choice. We should have the gold standard of operations in everything that we do for our citizens. So when we look at our strategic plan, we look at our city's mission, the city of Sheboygan is dedicated to providing residents, the business community and visitors with fiscally responsible municipal services in an effective and responsible manner to meet the needs of our, div our diverse community. Again, this is our mission to get us to our vision. The city's vision presently is the city of Sheboygan will be a family oriented and prosperous community with a wide variety of housing, uh, business, cultural, and recreational opportunities in a safe and attractive neighborhood, or neighborhoods, I should say. Our strategic plan, obviously we, um, we have our core values, our mission, and our vision. And that takes us to our 2021 quarter uh, one and two progress um, finance related. So when we talk about consolidated internal monthly uh, charge entities to annual uh, 2,148 entries, reduced to uh, 79 savings of 22 days or $7,700 annually. Again, this is something that sounds so simple, but it's actually very, very large. This is just one example of lean. When we looked at streamlining accounts payable, AP, check runs from weekly to monthly, now it's semi-monthly, we improved our cash flow management. Our AP vendor uh, tr transfer uh, to ACH payments, again, 66 vendors initially, uh, 55 total print uh, print check handling costs. So for every every check that we would print, it was about a $55 to, to handle each one. Now we're looking at a cost uh, cost savings. Our ACH payments are about a nickel a piece, and it's a thousand fewer checks. So about a $55,000 annual savings, plus significant time savings. Our AP vendor information packet. Uh, again, it's a, a fillable PDF form, electronic submissions now available in citywide uh, staff. Our AP vendor virtual credit card uh, with a rebate potential of 40,000 in annual savings in addition to the addition to the prior savings. Introduction of check scanning software, reducing staff time and expenses associated with daily bank, bank deposit. One of my favorites is the auto insurance deductible increase um, from 1,000 to 2,500. And that's about a $19,300 savings annually. Now, if you think about it, you say, well, what's the big deal? Our average claims in a year were $2,100. So just by making this one change, something so simple, right? It's like an insurance commercial. Just by making one change, we actually have a nine year return on investment just from one change. Again, it's looking at everything and everything is under review. So when we talk about our first quarter and second quarter progress and monthly close, 
for financial. Um, beginning January 2021, year end close uh, to March 15th. Again, this is three months earlier. And this, is, this has contributed to uh, newer staff, newer processes, newer procedures, and really just driving things home and how we, how we do our processes. Actively managing delinquent personal property tax collection, April notifications gained $179,000 in 2020 and 45,000 prior, in prior years. Second notification distributed in 2021. Our follow-up was not managed in the past. Again, people were late and we weren't sending reminders and following up with this. So again, money tends to stay out there if nobody is reminded to pay. Development of long-term general obligation geo debt management plan. If you remember prior, in prior meetings, I had uh, brought this to the council to reaffirm the Moody's uh, AA2 rating with positive commentary regarding our geo debt management. They were very impressed in reviewing this. And this model was developed to review future capital improvements purchasing or buy, borrowing. Adapted and adopted in 2022 capital improvements program CIP with less than 2 million geo debt related projects and planned fund balance usage. Again, this is new for the city. Again, we have so much in our general, um, uh, general fund balance that we really need to be looking at this for better stewardship. Hired an experienced municipal finance director, Caitlin. Exciting times, exciting changes. Caitlin's gonna help us get, uh, help us manage our financial uh, department in a much better manner. No pressure. Look at that. <laughs> even, even the big guy knows. <laughs> I'm just saying. We made the right decision. Uh, begin creation of the city's first five-year fiscal strategic plan with, with Ehlers, Inc. Uh, to better manage uh, valuable financial resources and maximize the plan and management of TIG closures. Again, you've heard me talk about the fact that the city needs to be better at strategic planning, but it, it's everything needs to be strategically planned. We have to have a better understanding of our, of our costs, of our revenues, and the projects that are coming in the, in the near future and how can we afford these, these projects uh, moving forward. Last one on here is arrange a city's five-year reevaluation. Cities equalized to assessed ratio has been non-compliant for five years. Again, this is another example of bad management. This, is, this affects all of our residents and our businesses and we need to be better at, uh, with responsibility and balancing throughout the city. So investments in employees are number one asset, 2021 quarter one and two. So when we first look at it, our annual, an, annual uh, mandatory anti-harassment training of all staff was, uh, was taken care of. Uh, we uh, accomplished our job description questionnaires, our JDQs, and we completed those and those are actually sent out and being reviewed. We increased the level of staff attendance at our annual MUNIS um, ERP conference by 400%. That is just amazing. Again, we have our employees, our, uh, our subject matter experts working with Tyler MUNIS directly. Our annual AD, ADA FML workers comp training all supervisory staff. Non-represented employees handbook, uh, first update in six years is in progress. Again, many, many missing procedures and policies um, in the old handbook. Expanded our annual MUNIS PACE training days um, by 66%. Again, investing in our employees, giving our employees the time and the tools to be able to do their jobs better. It's working smarter, not harder. So invest in employees. Always treat your employees exactly as you want them to treat your best customers. Stephen Covey. We have to remember that we are a service company and we service our constituents internally and externally. Investment in business and infrastructure 2021 quarters one and two. If you always 
done it that way, it's probably wrong by Charles Ketting Kettinger. Doing the same thing and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. So moving forward, investment in business infrastructure, 2021, quarters one and two. So we completed the Munis conversion in 2019 upgrade. We went live on March 1st on schedule, and that was a great job by the city. We did a huge upgrade in our Munis. Now we're taking the modules and we're updating the modules and, and expanding on it. We look at the upgrade, 477 users, con users converted, 1,035 remain. This stat right here is the stats from Munis, Tyler Munis. If we wouldn't have upgraded when we did starting last year, there are still 1,035 Munis users standing in line that need to do the update, do the upgrade. If you think about that, it's like standing in line for, for concert tickets for those of us that remember that. And by the time you get to the gate, nobody's available to help you. So it's good timing. And I know it was, it was a huge concern because of the holidays and projects and process, but again, there's, there's meaning to the madness. Next upgrade is going to be in fall of 2022. Again, small snippets. We look at our MyCivic electronic community information and engagement platform that has been approved by the council. That's going to give us um, the ability to move the city forward with a one-stop shop for our constituents and allow two-way communication, not just the city to the constituent, but also the constituent to the city. Our IBMI, AS400 migration, again, this is an old uh, technology system that the city has and has been maintaining, and we are getting off of this. We have progressed, 40% of the data is reduced on that system thus far, and our goal is aggressive, aggressive to get off of it. Our policy creation update, long-term investment fund balance, TIF code of ethics. Uh, this was originally um, originated back in 1995 and it was updated in 2011, but the only thing that was updated for those that remember was the date. Again, we need to continuously update our policies. So this policy was updated in 2021. The enterprise fleet management, $100 million, a $1 million savings uh, in geo debt for five year program. Again, this allows us to free up our, our general oblig obligation debt investment and allow us to put that, those funds to true capital improvements. Our EAM uh, software implementation, um, we are moving forward with that and that's going to be a huge project that'll take us upwards of two years. It's going to allow us to understand what our investments are, what our maintenance, how much, we, how much money we invest in it. It's going to allow us to run um, basically data on capital improvements projects and see how we can strategically plan for the future. Neighborly loan software, collaborative, collaboratively integrated and managed by the city development and finance. Again, pairing those together this is a one of my ex, this is one of my most exciting pieces just because for the several years in finance and personnel we all understand how loans continue to be a problem personal property has been a problem we haven't managed um, the the actual loans and we haven't communicated to our constituents and our business owners on when those loans are due and when um, what the interest payments are We've been the worst bank out there, so this really cleaned that up. When we look at the loans now under active management, this is something that our constituents or our customers actually can go online and see how much is owed, how much the payment is, when the payment's due, and, uh, and better, better manage it. Last is the MS office upgrade, uh, phase one completed. This may not sound that that important to the, to the group, but please understand that with the number of employees that we have within the city, we literally went from 2010 to 20, uh, uh, 2016 was our first upgrade, and then we took 2016 to 2019. So again, great job uh, to the city staff and to the IT 
uh, IT group for doing that. So looking forward, 2021, quarter three and four, without continued growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement, and success have no meaning. Again, Benjamin Franklin. So we look at that strategic plan, 2017 to 2021, our strategic plan extension. We, I had asked for a one-year extension last year from the, uh, from the current strategic plan, which runs through 2021 to, to 2022. Our completion of the 2021 project and initiatives outlined in our 2021 budget and CIP. 2021 uh, professional strategic, strategic planning. We're gonna build upon our current uh, focus areas, additional addition of the diversity and inclusion. We're gonna promote Sheboygan as a premier community, both business and residential. And then in our 2021 plan for 2020, 2020, 2023 strategic planning, we're gonna be util utilizing uh, professional services to properly engage residents and create a cohesiveness for our new strategic plan of 2023 through 2027. Again, we will be getting external input as well as internal input um, to make this plan truly the city's. So moving forward in 2021, Munis permitting and code enforcement module, 10% data reduction of the AS400. Exploration of Tyler payments and cashiering electronic payment options. This is something that's actually very, very important for us. Again, this is seriously, uh, it's using check, uh, uh, credit cards. I know it sounds simple, but we don't have a true system within the city to use credit card payments. Munis General Ledger Fund and Account Consolidation and Redesign. As an example, we have 1,081 cost centers. 1,081 cost centers, just think about that. How disorganized is that? We have 6,143 accounts. We're gonna change that down to 553 charge codes. Again, streamlining things, making things easier and organized. Business policy and process improvement um, and active receivables management. Again, not to go into huge dissertation on this, but this is another area that has been over 10 years old of mismanagement. We have 64 pages that equal one and a half million dollars of monies that have never been collected. And again, because of the statute of limitations, we can't go back that far. Again, a million and a half dollars, imagine that money just sitting out there. Munis payroll module and process enhancement, proper use of workflow approvals. Again, that's a pro project that's in process. Plus we're going to be purchasing uh, hardware to assist in time management, uh, time collection. And in Munis vendor self-service um, interactive portal, this allows our vendors to actually log in. They can see their invoices, their payments, frees up staff, um, staff time for follow-up. Again, if they don't have to contact and ask questions to our staff, this allows them to look at it at any time during their time period and not affect our, our personnel and our team members. So 2021 lean principles in 2021 uh, to support our stairs and core values and to su the substantial investment of our business infrastructure and employees, the city began utilizing the lean principles to identify and remove waste or MUDA as they call it. Implementation of lean principles is helping the city to improve business practices and decision making utilize, utilizing lean principles is improving the city services, allowing employees to work smarter, not harder, and provide residents with the best possible outcomes. Again, business systems upgrades, expanded employee training, utilizing lean um, practices. These are all part of our stairs to our mission and vision. So one of, one of our best, and, um, best quotes out there is to, pro to provide the best level of service and efficiencies which the city of Sheboygan residents deserve. The city needs to invest in the training and technologies to make these expectations a reality. Have a dream, define a plan, make it happen. By me. <laughs> I just thought that. 
So please, please remember, um, past failures are not the city staff's fault, but a lack of management and leadership that the city has, has had. So please, please understand, we do have a great staff, and we are working diligently to make the city a better place to live, work, and play. Thank you. All right, thank you, Administrator Wolf. If anyone has any follow-up, please uh, reach out to Administrator Wolf. Um, and just speaking, uh, we'll go to 1.8 Mayor's announcements. Um, as folks are probably aware in the news of uh, former Mayor Bob Ryan's passing, uh, the Common Council and the administration of the city of Sheboygan do express their saddest and sincere uh, condolences uh, to former Mayor Bob Ryan's family. Um, mayor Ryan served as the mayor of the city of Sheboygan from April 2009 to March of tw uh, 2012. Um, and our, our, our condolences and sympathies go out to his family, his wife, Mary, and their children, as well as his numerous friends and family. Um, additional notes and comments. Uh, NOAA announced the designation of the 962 square mile area off the Wisconsin Lake Michigan as a natural marine national marine sanctuary. Uh, these sanctuaries are, pr are protect waters and include uh, protecting habitats and preserving archeolog archeological sites um, primarily the shipwrecks coasts off of um, our shorelines. So the, this project will be identifying 36 historically significant shipwrecks um, that relate to the maritime heritage of both Sheboygan, Manitowoc, Port Washington, and Two Rivers. Um, for more information, check out NOAA's website. More information will come. I uh, want to send a shout out and thank you to all city staff uh, for pulling off the 4th of July weekend and making it a true success. want to extend um, a thank you to all the aldermen um, that participated in the city parade as well, adding to the festivities. Um, so thank you everybody for, for pulling off that. Um, an additional heads up, North Calumet Drive will be undergoing a major reconstruction, a road project um, next week, so please plan, plan accordingly. This uh, will begin July 12th and will hopefully be done before Labor Day. Um, also a shout out and uh, congratulations to uh, Administrators Wolf's uh, one year anniversary tomorrow. Um, it's been through a lot and no better time to come on board as a city administrator during a national pandemic uh, and the budget. So <laughs> thank you Administrator Wolf. <laughs> All right, we'll jump into 2.1 hearings. Um, hearing number 121-22 pursuant to the notice published and personal notes sent out by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city of Sheboygan zoning map to change the use district classification of vacant land on North 15th Street from class urban residential to class urban commercial. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Uh, Chad? Thank you, Mayor. So I just, just for the council's sake, this is uh, the Water's Edge condominium project that was developed by Paul Weaver along the Sheboygan River behind the Dulmas Decor. Um, that project originally was to be two phases, phase one of 15 units of condos and phase two of 16 units. Um, due to some challenges with selling condos in that area, um, they have decided to not proceed with phase two and therefore are rezoning it to become a boutique hotel. A 25 room boutique hotel will be constructed on the parcel along the river that is being asked to be rezoned. So, so this is for rezoning it from residential to commercial in order to uh, build a hotel. Thank you, Chad. Last call, anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, Alderperson Feldy. I move to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion second. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The hearing is closed. We'll jump into 3.1, the consent agenda. Alderperson Feldy. I move to re receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on any items in the consent agenda? Alderperson no, Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a question for me for item 3.4. Do we know if anybody reached out to Mr. Paul to share what has been done so far regarding uh, the birds on the grocery store? Older Decker. 
<clears throat> yes, Mr. Paul uh, attended the public works meeting last week, Tuesday, and uh, we, um, Director Beeble and uh, some of the other city staff explained what was uh, uh, and what what's what what is being done by the um, by the by the by the owner and things like that. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, this is a roll call vote. So please reference your board docs. I, I have a question. Oh, Alder. Excuse me. Alder Paneski. Um, the stop signs, uh, three point eight, three point nine. I I am assuming that public works. Here's the rationale that there is a protocol and a rationale because this is probably stop sign number five and six I voted for. So can somebody just briefly, three sentences, tell me how it comes to be? Uh, I guess what, you, yeah, the stop sign is going to be placed at the corner of uh, 7th and uh, Lakeshore Drive. So traffic going southbound on South 7th Street is going to have to stop? So th I, I understand that there will be a stop sign there. How do you go about determining stop signs should be placed at various intersections? Um, well, it's a it's a T intersection. The reason the reason it didn't we don't always put stop signs at T intersections, but that is a bu busy intersection with people coming northbound on Lakeshore Drive. So it made it made sense. So we we really didn't do any type of study, but it's it's a T intersection. So we decided to put a stop sign there. There was some requests by the by the King Park neighborhood uh, neighborhood organization. That's where that's where the request came from. Okay, thank you. All right, Mayor uh, Alder Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if we could go back to 3.4 for a minute regarding the seagulls. Uh, I made a point at the public works meeting that I think our new garbage pickup system with the carts has been a tremendous help for the seagull problem. Yes, it is a problem, but I know when I drive down South Business Drive past the old pick and save store, there are a couple seagulls flying around, but nothing like the hundreds we had a year or two ago. And I believe the owner of that property is is uh, cooperating with the city. But again, I think our new garbage pickup system has been a, a tremendous uh, asset to the Siegel problem. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Additional comments? All right, please vote. Ten eyes. Right. Four point one will be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. Resolutions uh, items five point one through five point two will, will be referred to various committees as well. Reports of committees. RC number sixty one twenty one by the finance and personnel committee. To whom was referred number twenty eight? Excuse me, twenty three twenty one twenty two by Elder Persons Mitchell, Flicky Paneski, Born and Feldy, updating the policy for applying for undesignated fund balance for the general fund, general funds ensuing budget year. Re recommends adopting the resolution. Elder Person Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the IRC and adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion second. Any discussion on this item? Mayor. Elder Person Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, City Administrator Wolf uh, bounced this idea off me several weeks ago, and uh, I think it's another good uh, example of Todd's leadership in bringing forth this idea with uh, try to be conservative with our with our borrowing when possible and also use some of our uh, general fund balance uh, uh, as a practical matter going forward. So I fully support this. Thank you, Alder Person Borden. Additional comments? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please reference your board docs. Ten. 
and eyes. All right, 6.2 RC number 6221 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred a direct referral resolution number 242122 by Elder Persons Decker and Prella authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a permanent easement, underground utility easement, and temporary easement between the city of Sheboygan and its Board of Water Commissioners that are specific to, to the raw water improvement project. Elder Person Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to file. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and second on filing. Any discussion? Seeing none, this is a voice vote. All those in favor of filing, please state aye. 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 Anyone, aye. anyone opposed? That is filed. Thank you. 6.3 RC number 63-21-22 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolutions number 25-21-22 by Elder Persons Decker and Prella authorizing the purchasing, purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for the purchase of one Bobcat brand Toolcat tool carrier vehicle and related attachments to the Department of Public Works Motor Vehicle Fleet. Elder Persons Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Second. There's been a motion second. Any other discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote, so please reference your board docs. Nice. All right. 6.4 RC number 6421-22 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred a direct referral resolution number 2621-22 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski authorizing the payment of UMR invoices for the administrative fees, transplant, and stop loss coverage. Elder Person Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the IRC and adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion second. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Ten eyes. All right. 7.1 RO number 3121-22 by the Plan Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 4-2122 by Elder Persons Decker and RO number 2221-22 by the City Clerk to amend the City of Sheboygan official zoning map of the City Zoning Ordinance to change the use classification district of vacant land on North 15th Street uh, from Class Urban Residential to Class Urban Commercial wishes to report this matter was discussed at the regular meeting of the Planning Commission on uh, June 15, 2021. And after due consideration, recommends approving the ordinance filing the RO. Alder Person Decker. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion second. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. That item is approved. All right. Other matters authorized by law, 9.1, City Attorney. Uh, 9.1 is a general ordinance by all the persons Feldy, Ackley, and Foreign, adjusting the forfeiture ranges in the Sheboygan Municipal Code related to dangerous and vicious dogs, nuisances, marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia, and adopting an updated bond schedule for use in municipal court proceedings. And that will be referred to the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee. We've oh. exhausted the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. There's been a motion second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? We're adjourned. Yay.